uh, one of the most notable and, and potentially transformative competencies that E. coli is demonstrating to us is its highly developed ability to reinvent itself. To do this, it has to have developed its own form of creativity. And this emphasizes our own need to develop our creativity, creativity, not just as role models for kids, but for reinventing ourselves. We are going to have to reinvent ourselves. And I, I'm honestly I'm going to share uh, something from a, a, a paper here that, uh, about potential future education roles. Right? Educators will always exist. But what are they going to be called, and what are they going to be doing? Right? Um, so let's think for a moment about, uh, OK, so uh, there was a couple of quotes I wanted to share from uh, the interviews that I, I did, a couple of your colleagues. Um, creativity is a huge issue. We need to find ways to encourage it within our system, not just the kids. So I, mean, I knew it was, this was going on. I knew this conversation was going on in certain pockets or places in, in your system. Someone also said, I think our EP, AP meetings could accommodate some adaptive work in each meeting. And so obviously, I, I couldn't agree more, right? So I say, go for it, guys. So let's think for a moment about the CQ in this room. How many people are in this room? Assuming that we haven't left. Is there about 100? Is there about 120 or something? Let's say there's 100, because my math is hopeless, right? As that lady who was looking after the card table uh, playing blackjack last <laughs> night, totally insane. She was kept on saying, you, you can't count. Are you a teacher? <laughs> uh, so I was blaming my um, John Lennon glasses, but that, no, that wasn't really. So say there's 100 people in this room, and the average age is 35, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I know there's some old folks out there, but we're all, most of us are 35, right? And so 100 times 35 is three, even though there's just 100 people in this room, that's three and a half thousand years of life experience. Different journeys to this point in time and history, different adaptations, genomes in a room, slushing around, talking about collaborative intelligence. Uh, it's not because I love collaborative intelligence, guys. It's because I, I'm convinced, I assume, that this is one of the cleverest things you can do for yourselves, is to emulate the bacteria by getting together in conferences. The human. <laughs> I don't know what I said there that's been misinterpreted, right? It's just been misinterpreted. The, I have a lawsuit on my hands. I don't even know what it's about now. The human experience of collaborative intelligence is much more common than we might actually um, give ourselves credit for. I, should, should, I shared some big system examples. But in real life, I mean, collaborative intelligence, peak experiences of collaborative intelligence would, would, could be you know, sensed and people talk about it and probably have had these experiences in, say, uh, participative team sports or religious services or musical or choral activities that involve groups, drumming, chanting. This is, this is actually an example of us sort of uh, deciding to tune ourselves in in, 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 in a different way, right? But the scale of type of challenges that we are facing as a society, but also in, in, with respect to your own system, are well beyond isolated, disparate, and individualized remedies, guys. Wherever we're going, we're going together. So we better develop our ability to collaborate and work together to do that. So we shouldn't be too hard on ourselves. Put a little perspective on this. An ant colony has been uh, working, or ants have been actually living in, and working in colonies for over 50 million years. Termites for 200 million years. And we've been at it only a few hundred thousand. So we're sort of green behind the, you know, wet behind the ears, so to speak, still at, uh, in, as far as um, collaborative intelligence is concerned. And this is where the name of the, my title of my book came from, obviously. But in Western Africa, there are why, why vast uh, areas of very severe terrain. And the creatures there, living systems, are just hanging on by their fingernails by, for dear life. When the climate shifts just a little bit, they either die or move away, except for the anthills. The anthills are metaphorically saying, where's everybody going? You see, you might not be able to teach an anthill to fetch, 
because trust an Irishman to just lie on the very front of his box. <laughs> it's not trustworthy, is it? You, can't, you might not be able to teach an ant to fetch, but they can look after themselves very well, thank you very much. They build midden system, they have sewage systems, air conditioning, they have universal daycare, which is free. <laughs> God almighty, they, 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 a few jumps on us, right? So they also have a good examples of an adaptive stance. And that term may mean something to you. If it doesn't, I think there's a game, there's a link about adaptive stance on that, on that uh, site. But uh, speaking of adaptive stance, I'm going to give you another example of, of, of uh, collaborative intelligence in the, in the natural world that, we, that might be, teach us a few lessons, is, uh, is the baboon. Now, the baboon, on its own, wandering around, really, it's quite a sad creature. The lights are on, there's nobody, you know, but there's nobody home. Some village is missing its idiot. <laughs> but you put that baboon into its trip, and now we have a different creature entirely. We have a formidable creature. Anyone been here been ganged by monkeys? <laughs> no? We got mugged by monkeys in Rishikesh two years ago, right? When we went to visit my daughter. It's not pretty. And I, cause actually, my wife said I acted ignobly. She said, you ran away with bananas in your hand. You should have thrown the bananas at them, right? I ran away with the bananas and left her and Lee, my son, with the, with the monkeys, right? Very angry monkeys, right? So where do you go with the monkey, the bananas, right? Anyway, monkeys, baboons, stick to the topic. But baboons, you see, have, there's very good reasons. They're actually called the rats of Africa. They are thriving in Africa where actually a lot of major creatures, a lot of major the big uh, primates, are actually dramatically reducing their populations due to human pressure. So how is it they do that? Well, baboons practice a very effective group learning and information process, sharing process that um, ethologists and animal behaviorists know quite a lot about. But in this, this is which they actually appear to compete to share the most useful and adaptive piece of information. They actually do these things on a morning ritual. They share information about what they did the day before. And it's like a competition. And the troop leaders for that day tend to be the person who, or the, the, the baboon that comes up with the best information from the day before. Oh, I find such and such somewhere, right? So no pa patent lawyers in the baboon troop either. They're all competing to share this stuff. Jonas Salk, the inventor of this polio vaccine, once said that our future survival will not depend on the survival of the strongest, no matter what nation states think. It, so it will depend on the survival of the wisest. And this is one of the reasons why we have to get wise fast. And the question is, are we getting wise enough fast enough? And that's, again, brings back that education is at the very center of what society starts to need to do to change and make, it, and make itself adapt. 